Okay, so we have uh, a new Mishnah. It's an Ayin Aleph Amid Beis, 71B. It says, Pesach sheshachtu shalei l'shmei b'shabbos. So he's shechting a cover in Pesach on Shabbos, which sounds like there's no problem there because it's uh, the 14th of Nisan is on Shabbos, then excellent, he shechted the carbon Pesach. Um, the problem is that he shechted it Shalei L'Shmai. The rule is that a carbon Pesach Shalei L'Shmai is possible. So he didn't do any mitzvah here. There's no, there's no carbon. It's, it's totally invalid. He's chayav alav chatas. He has to bring a chatas because he violated Shabbos. What about the other way? Let's say you had a different sacrifice that you, the, the rule is that other sacrifices that are slaughtered are kosher. So let's say you slaughtered some other sacrifice Pesach. Now, the sacrifice is going to be valid. It's just not going to be a carbon Pesach. Which is that has one advantage there. It's a valid sacrifice. So it works like this. In Ruyan If that sacrifice wasn't fit to be a carbon pesach anyway, why not? It was the wrong animal, it was the wrong age. Um, it couldn't have been a carbon pesach. So then that's not considered a toya bidvar mitzvah. That's too big of a mistake. That animal wasn't eligible anyway. So therefore, he's chayim. He shechted a, a, a sacrifice on Shabbos, he's chayim. But if it was eligible to be a carbon Pesach, then Rebbe Lezer mechayim chatas. Rebbe Lezer says, yechayim chatas. Rebbe Lezer is a strict one here. In other cases, it's interesting, Rebbe Lezer is the lenient one when it comes to Shabbos. If there's a mitzvah there, Rebbe Lezer says, oh, preparatory things for a mitzvah, you're exempt. Over here, he says, yes, there was a mitzvah, but there's a chiv chatas here. You violated Shabbos. Rabbi Yeshua, Paita, Rabbi Yeshua here is the lenient one. Rabbi Yeshua says you're exempt. His logic is, is that if a mitzvah was performed and I was toya bidvar mitzvah, I made a mistake. And in the end, actually there was a mitzvah anyway, although it was on Shabbos, there's a special uh, dispensation that he's exempt from bringing a chatas because there was a mitzvah that was performed. Amalai Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer says to Rabbi Yeshua, we're going to have some conversations here. They don't always match perfectly. We'll have to see how it works for when, when we learn the Gemara. Amalai Rabbi Lezer, Mama Pesach Shuhu Mutter Lishmai. When it comes to carbon Pesach, if you bring it correctly, it's Mutter on Shabbos. Keshashina Shmai Chayev. But if you change the name, you make one mistake on the carbon Pesach, Yechayev, you violated Shabbos because the carbon was puzzle. Let's leave that out. You made one mistake. Zvachim sheim asuram lishman. Other sacrifices which are prohibited to be brought. Even lishma. And okay, so, and now you're bringing other sacrifices. So that's mistake number one. Kishishin shman. Mistake number two, you're changing the name of those sacrifices. In a din you should for sure be chayev. By the carbon pesach, you make one mistake. You say that you chayev. No, the truth is that that mistake that you made made the carbon puzzle. <laughs> That's Rabbi Yeshua's claim. But Rabbi Leza is saying no. You make one mistake on the carbon pesach, you chayev, because you change the name, you change the title of the carbon. So if you bring a different sacrifice, which shouldn't have been brought anyway, and not only that, but you even change from what that sacrifice is supposed to be, for sure you should be chayim. You double problem. Yeah, Rabbi Naftali. Could you please clarify who is making the mistake and who is chayim? Yeah. So um, I guess the assumption here, we can assume that it's the, um, the sheikh. Yeah. And he's the one who's Kayev. Right. Thank right. You. He's the one that did the malacha, that violated Shabbos. Yeah. Okay. Amalei Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua says, one second. 
is responding to Rabbi Eliezer's claim. Over there, what was the mistake? The person took the carbon Pesach and he turned it into a different carbon. And the other carbon was not allowed to be brought today. So that's why he's chayim. Over here, he took a different carbon and he turned it into a Pesach, which is allowed to be brought today, should be pater. Amalei Rebelezer, Rebelezer responds, There are sacrifices that are brought every Shabbos, carbon tamer, carbon musaf. So are you trying to tell me, he tells Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yeshua that if someone takes like, any carbon and sacrifices them as if they're a carbon musaf, as if they're a carbon tamid, that you're going to be exempt because those sacrifices are brought on Shabbos. So whenever you want, you, you, uh, not whenever you want, but anytime someone would mistakenly bring his private carbon and say, oh, I, th I thought it was a tamid, uh, he's going to be exempt on Shabbos. So that's, for that's clearly not the case. And therefore, your, your uh, logic that because you changed it for something that was eligible, that's not a good logic. Amalei Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua says that's not a good comparison. The carbon, the carbon tamed is one sacrifice that's brought. The carbon masa is a limited amount of sacrifices that are brought. Carbon pesa. Everyone is bringing, it's all over the place. And this person's trying to get his sacrifice in and he made a mistake. So over there, it was a mistake and he brought a sacrifice that wasn't supposed to be there, but he was trying to, he thought it was his carbon pesa. So he brought it as a carbon pesa. And now you're making him chayv khatas. No, his, uh, the fact is the sacrifice was eligible. The sacrifice was a kosher sacrifice and he made a, a reasonable mistake because it looked like it could have been a carbon Pesach also. And yeah, it wasn't as carbon Pesach, but it was still a sacrifice. Reb Meir Aymer, Af HaSheichel L'Shem In Mori Tzibar is Pater. Reb Meir is the most lenient here. He says that even if someone intends to bring a carbon Tzibar, he is also exempt. Okay. If the, the, well, everything that we're talking about is when the sacrifice was actually a valid sacrifice for whatever, uh, whatever he was bringing it for. Uh, in other words, the blood gets sprinkled and the meat gets eaten and it's, it's, a, it's a kosher sacrifice. However, in a case where the sacrifice isn't kosher, then everyone's gonna agree that that was a violation of Shabbos. Let's say the carbon Pesach was shechter for people that cannot eat the carbon Pesach because they're too old, or for, for people that weren't registered, or for people that didn't have a bris, or for people that were tame, chayev, that sacrifice was invalid. However, if there's a mixture of people that were acceptable and not acceptable, then the sacrifice is valid, and the person that brought it is pater. Should be less than pot. It should be more than potter. It should be like kosher or something. Potter is like um, you did something wrong. Um, I guess he did something wrong. It doesn't want to say that it was totally mutter because you're not supposed to do that. But it wasn't a uh, Shabbos violation because the, the sacrifice is acceptable and it's a carbon pesach. Shach to benim to balmom. That's an interesting one. He shechts it, and it turns out that it's the animal wasn't uh, wasn't acceptable. It had a mum. He's chayev. The reason over here why he's chayev, how was he supposed to know that? Is because he should have looked it over. This is a mum that was on the outside. This is not a trefa. Shocht of an to trefa beseser. If he shechts it and he finds out that it was a trefa on the inside, that means they checked the lungs. There was a sircha. <laughs> it wasn't glap. So then he's potter. That there's no way of knowing. Yeah, you have to check if it's kosher. Oh, how did they do it for the carbon peso? No, they took out the inner. Yeah, 
Right. I assume that everything got everything that could have been a trait was checked. I assume. Yeah. So they didn't have to. Um, the way the trefus works is that you only check for the roiv that's matzi. You, know, you don't have to start uh, cutting through the, the skull and checking if the meninges are uh, intact. Shachtu v'noida shemashchu abayla mesiadam. He shafted the carbon pesa. Then he finds out that the owners reach that the uh, the owners that had registered for this they retracted. They did, they signed up to a different carbon. Uh, I'm not part of that group, right? or they died. or they became tummy. He's part of What he did was perfectly acceptable. He shafted, but. Uh, in a way that was uh, that was okay. When he shafted, that's what that's uh, what he knew. Okay, but my askinan. The Gemara asks. We started off the Mishnah saying that someone that checks the carbon pesach shalei l'shmai, and it's on Shabbos he's chayiv chatos. What's the case? Ilema b'taya. We say that he made a mistake. Shamet minei akira b'tayus havi akira. He made a mistake. We have a machlekes. Taisa says it's machlekes in Menachas. If Akira betas, if someone makes a mistake, if that actually changes the status of the carbon, does he have to do it intentionally, or is it, or even if it's a mistake? Now comes along our Mishnah, and our Mishnah says that if someone shechts the carbon pesach for the wrong intention, he's chayv chatas. That means that he invalidated the carbon, why it was a mistake. And apparently there's opinions of Amiraim that hold that a mistake doesn't invalidate the carbon. Now, if that's the case, that there's a machlaikis about Akira Betas, if it works, how could there how could there be a clear Mishnah that says Akira Betas works when there's a machlaikis later of Amiraim if it works? Elaba Iker. It must be that he intentionally said that this is not a carbon Pesach, I'm bringing this instead for something else. I already brought my carbon Pesach. I know I designated this as a carbon Pesach, this was an extra one, but my carbon Pesach, I signed up with a different group or whatever, and now I'm bringing a Shlamin. Aim a Seifa. So let's take a look further in the Mishnah. If there was another sacrifice that was slaughtered for the sake of a carbon Pesach, there's a Machlaikas over there, between Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Yeshua, Imein and Ruyim Chayev. If it can't be a carbon Pesach anyway, because it's the wrong carbon, then he's Chayev. However, in Ruyim Haim, Rabbi Lezer Machayev Chatos, Rabbi Yeshua Paiter. Rabbi Yeshua says he's exempt. Now, we just said in the Reisha that we're talking about Oiker, that he did it on purpose. Iba Oiker, Mali Ruyim, Mali Shein Ruyim. The reason why Rabbi Yeshua says he's exempt is because he was a Toya and it was a Bidvar Mitzvah. He was a Toya. He made a mistake and the mitzvah was fulfilled. So we say there's like this dispensation that he doesn't get to have to bring a chatos. But if he did it on purpose, what are you telling me is a taya? He's not a taya. He did it on purpose. He brought the wrong carbon on Shabbos. And then he says it's a carbon Pesach to, to, to switch it. He's not a taya. He wasn't allowed to do that. Obviously, we're talking about that the, everything here was done by mistake. And that's how there's a machlaikas Rebbe Lezer and Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua says he's exempt. If that's the case, then we go back to the beginning of the Mishnah. And now we have a proof that a toya is, um, affects the validity of the uh, someone that makes a mistake of, of a carbon Pesach it can actually change it. And that, that goes against what the Amirayim argue, uh, argue about the Menachas. So the Gemara says, Reisha Baikir Vesefer Betaya. You have to divide the Mishnah up. The beginning is talking about Aikir, the second part is talking about Taya. Amir Abavin, um, well, actually, first it asks it. Reisha Baikir Vesefer Betaya, Amir Abavin in, yes. Reisha Baikir Vesefer Betaya. That's how it is. You have to take the different cases of the Mishnah. I guess the, the Mishnayas were put together. Um, and arranged, but they were 
taken from different pieces. So this piece was taken from one place, this was from another place, and that's how it ends up with. It's not always consistent. This, 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 this Mishnah talks about different people. The beginning of the Mishnah is talking, as we discussed, about the shortcut making a mistake. Right. The second part talks about the person who brings it having a problem with the membership in the group or whatever. So right. I think you could argue you don't necessarily have to learn one from another. There could be inconsistencies in this mission because we're talking. Right. The only problem people. is that we're dealing with Chil Shabbos. That's the, that's the theme of the Mishnah. That it's mistakes of a carbon that would violate Shabbos. Now, the violation of Shabbos would probably be by the Shaykhan. That would be the big, uh, the big uh -huh. violation. Okay. So Ashkechei Rab Yitzchak Bar Yosef le Rab Avo David Koy Bachlusa Dinchi. Rab Yitzchak Bar Yosef finds Rab Avo, and he Rab Avo is in a large group of people. I don't know why the Gemara has to tell this to me. Amalei Masnisin Mai. He asks him what's the pshat in our Mishnah. Amalei Reisha Bai Kavasefer B'Taya. I guess maybe what it means to say is that it was so clear to Rab Avo, even though there was a large crowd there. That Rabbi Bo just responded on the spot. Reisha Baika, there was no conversation there. He just said, oh, yeah, Daf Ayan Aleph, Reisha Baika was safe in Tanamine are boy and Zimnan, Vidamale Kamandamancha Bakisa. He reviewed it, or he, he learned it from him 40 times, and it was as if it was put in a pouch, put in his pocket. He had to memorize this. This wasn't, um, this was counterintuitive. So he had to repeat it uh, 40 times till he got it, till he, he said, okay, he has the, it's, it's settled. Okay, Tanan, it's taught in the Mishnah. Amr Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Amam Pesach Shemot Lishmai, Kishashin Shemai Chayev, when it comes to the carbon Pesach. If you bring it, if you bring it correctly, it's Mutter on Shabbos, but when you change its title, it's not a carbon Pesach, it's a Shlomim. You change its name. Then you're Chayib because you're Mechal Shabbos. Zvachim, other sacrifices, Shem Asurim Lashman, that you're not allowed to bring them for the correct. You can't bring a Shlomim, Stam on Shabbos. Kishashina Shman in a Din When you change the name and you call it something else, carbon Pesach, whatever you call it, is it not all the more so that you should be Chayib? The Im Isa. And if it's correct the way Rabbi Vo learned and the way Rabbi Oven learned that there's two different cases of the Mishnah, the Reisha, but the Reisha by Kiva What Rabbi Eliezer did is he takes the first case of the Mishnah and he uses it to prove the second case of the Mishnah. If the first case of the Mishnah is possible, a carbon Pesach, which could be brought on Shabbos as possible if you changed it. So for sure, another carbon that was brought for a, as a carbon Pesach, for sure, should, for sure should be possible. The only problem is, for sure should be a violation of Shabbos and you should be chayv chatas. That's the extension of that. The only problem is, is that the way we just explained is that the first case of the Mishnah was Eiker. You did it on purpose. If you change a carbon Pesach on purpose, you're chayv, so if you do it by mistake, for sure you should be high. What's the for sure? Over there you did it by mistake. If you accept the Gemara's terrace, then Rabbi Lezer's, if you, if you accept the way the Gemara is learning the first part of the Mishnah, then the second part of the Mishnah, then, the, then when, when the dialogue begins, it doesn't make sense. The Gemara answers, Rabbi Lezer Leishani Le, Rabbi Shua, okay. Rabbi Lezer Leishani Le. Gemara answers, we don't have a problem saying that according to Rabbi Eliezer, Oiker and Toya is the same. Both of them will be Akira B'Toyas Havi Akira. So in other words, the fact that Rabbi Eliezer brings the first part of the Mishnah as a proof for the second part of the Mishnah, according to him, it could have been Toya as well. He holds Akira B'Toyas Havi, Havi Akira. So for him, that, that distinction didn't matter. The problem is, Rabbi Shua Dishani Lai, Lishan Lai Hachi. So why doesn't Rabbi Shua respond that, no, there's a big difference there? That should have been Rabbi Shua's response. He doesn't respond that. Rabbi Shua responds 
over there you changed it for something that's also over here you changed it for something that's monthly. He gives a different response. You should have told him right away that your comparison is you're missing one variable that changes everything. He says, that was the conversation. We didn't record the whole conversation in the Mishnah, but Rabbi Shua tells him, you know what, according to me, what you're saying doesn't make sense anyway, but even according to you, that according to you, you can do that comparison because you don't make a difference between Oiker and Taya if you change the title of the carbon on purpose or not, that doesn't make a difference to you. Nevertheless, there's another problem that even according to you, that over there you switched it for something that was Aser, and over here you're switching it for something that's Mother. Amalei Rebelezer, now we continue with the Mishnah. Amalei Rebelezer, Imuri Tzibu Yechich, Hushem Mutar Lishman, Vashaych Lishman Chaya. says, look, Rabbi Yeshua says that if you switch the carbon for something that's eligible on Shabbos, then that should be acceptable and you shouldn't be chayv chathos. Rabbi Lezer responds that if you switch the carbon for a carbon seabar, you're still chayv. Amalei Rabbi Yeshua, lo yemamret be'imuri tzibar shekein yeslam kitzvah, turn pesach shein li kitzvah. Says it's not a good comparison. The carbon seabar, you just bring one of them. Over here, you have a whole bunch. Over here, it's possible to make a mistake. There's everyone is bringing. There's a much bigger uh, deal here. Lameimra, the kolhech des lekitzva mechayev Rabbi Shua. Are you trying to say that whenever there is a limit of how many are brought or how many are done, so then Rabbi Shua would actually hold chayev? In other words, Rabbi Shua said that. Does he really hold that? As he used this as a response to Rabbi Eliezer. But we have this discussion, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Shua, somewhere else. In Shabbos, there's a discussion about someone that performs a bris on Shabbos, which is totally acceptable. However, if there's two babies that need to be circumcised on Shabbos, one of them was born the last Shabbos. One of them was born, let's say, um, Friday, right before Shabbos. Or let's say the other one was born Maitzi Shabbos. And the two babies now are being, uh, they're, they're laying over there in the cradle. And one of them is supposed to have a bris today and one was supposed to have either yesterday or tomorrow. So Rabbi Yeshua said, Rabbi Yeshua's opinion is that if you did the wrong one, the wrong bris, so it would depend if the mitzvah was performed. So if, the bris was supposed to be performed yesterday and I did it today. So the mitzvah was performed. That was a valid bris. Now, I wasn't supposed to do it on Shabbos, but I'm still exempt from a because Rabbi Shua's opinion is, is that when the mitzvah is performed and you made a, a, um, a mistake that was an acceptable mistake, that wasn't a clearly a, a, a bad mistake. So then you, we, we don't make him bring a carbon chatas. However, if the baby was supposed to be, the bris was supposed to be Sunday, and you did the bris early, then that's not even considered a bris. That was, that's not even a mitzvah. So in that case, you, we have a limit on how many babies there are, and Rabbi Shua still says pata, similar to the carbon seba, where Rabbi Shua says, no, carbon seba, yeah, granted, he's gonna be high, because over there, there's only one. Over here also, there was only one, one baby that was supposed to be circumcised. Utanan, we have a Mishnah and Shabbos, Mishael Eishnei Tinaikas, if someone had two babies, Echad Lemul Achar Shabbos, Echad Lemul Shabbos, one of circumcision was supposed to be Sunday, one was supposed to be Shabbos, Meshach Echamal Ashal Achar Shabbos, Meshabbos is Chayyim. If he was circumcised the Sunday one on Shabbos, he's Chayyim. That wasn't a mitzvah. Echad Lemul Be'erev Shabbos, Echad Lemul Shabbos. If one was a Friday bris, and he did it on Shabbos, he did it on Shabbos, and there was another baby there that was supposed to be on Shabbos. Rabbi Lezer Mechayi Pchatas, Rabbi Shua Paiter. So we're asking that if someone shechts a carbon Pesach for the sake of a, a carbon Tamid, he should also be Pater. That's our question. In Rabbi Shua's uh, story about 
kitzva, no kitzva. We see that he doesn't hold of that from this. Amar Abba, mi yachem ayeskinu ken shekadam umal es shal erev Shabbos b'Shabbos. Rabbi Ami says that there's a difference. <clears throat> the the bris that needs to be done on Shabbos is still here. You're still about to do the, the correct bris. You're doing both on Shabbos. But the, the one that was supposed to be done yesterday, you're doing now on Shabbos. But because Shabbos is yet to be violated, is is yet and it's not is yet to be postponed is not postponed it's better to be uh, uh nitche. so you're in that stage of pushing off shabbat so that's why over there there's an, a dispensation for the circumcision that was done because the other one that's supposed to be done on shabbos you're 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 uh you're involved in that one as well so you're involved in a correct mitzvah that needs to be done on shabbos over here, when we're saying that he's violating Shabbos and he has to bring a chatos, when he's shech, the carbon for a carbon tzibar, that's because the carbon tamid was already brought. So you're not like involved in bringing a carbon tamid and while you were involved in it, you shechted another one while you were there. Yeah. This um, this is sort of like a dentist. <laughs> they go over there. <laughs> they, they say, oh, I noticed something else. Let's take them. Well, you're here anyway. You're in the chair. Let's take them both out. That's it. <laughs> oh, you want to get sedated again? <laughs> so, okay. So, but if uh, if it was done already, so that's that's Rabami's distinction. The carbon tamid was um, the carbon tamid was brought. So. So that's why you're going to be chayev achatas if you bring another carbon and claim that it's a tamid and change it to a tamid. If that's the case, that that's the big distinction here. If it was brought already or it wasn't brought already, Rab Meir Oimer, Afa Sheikh Lashemi Murit Sibur Pater. You see what happened? There was a there was a um, <coughs> a discussion between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Eliezer uses Hashaykh at Lashem Muri Tzibur, someone that checks for a carbon that's a, a communal sacrifice on Shabbos, he's Chayyab. That's, that's Rabbi Eliezer's uh, strong point. Now, Rabbi Yeshua has to, has to refute that. And he refutes it by saying that over there there's only one. And the point of that only one, according to Rabbi Ami, was that it was one and it was done already. Now, Rabbi Meir then comes in and says, by the way, is actually Pater. <clears throat> so what's the case? Obviously, it's the same case that they were talking about, where you shechted it already. So that's what the Kumar is a little surprised. Reb Meir says you're Pater even when the actual carbon Tzibur was shechted already, and you went ahead and you brought an, an additional one, and one that wasn't even supposed to be. That's how it's going to be. You shechted the carbon tibur already. And now you're bringing another one that wasn't supposed to be there. But Tanya, but we have a b'raisa. Reb Chia mi Evel Arav. It's the name of a place. I guess it's a different Reb Chia. Amar Reb Meir. This Reb Chia mi Evel Arav, um, he taught this b'raisa. And he says that Reb Meir says, that Reb Meir, that uh, Reb Meir says, Reb Meir claims that the Machlekes Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua is not about two children. One was supposed to be on Erev Shabbos and one was supposed to be on Shabbos. V'shachach umala shel Erev Shabbos v'shabbos t'chayev. Over there, everyone holds that they're chayyim. The, the Friday bris was performed on Shabbos, different than the way we learned before. According to this Reb Chia, Reb Meir is, Reb Meir is saying that the Machlekes Rebbe Lezer and Rebbe Shul was not about this. It was not about the Friday bris being performed on Shabbos. Alman Echlekel, what was the Machlekes Rebbe Lezer and Rebbe Shul? Al Shailesh Deitinaikis. There were two children. Echalam Alachar Shabbos, Echalam Beshabbos. Exactly the other way. One was supposed to be on Sunday. 
ושחר מלא סלחר שבס בשבס, זה רבי אלעזר מחייב חטס ורבי שוב פייטר. ורבי שוב says that he's exempt. That means It's not about Shech, it's not about the circumcision being done if Erev Shabbos was done on Shabbos. Everyone agrees that you chayat. What does this tell me? What we're trying to prove is that the carbon seabur that's brought, if the carbon seabur is brought already, even Reb Meir would say that Yechayim. Oh, this is it. Okay. Thinking that the um, when the two babies are here, he's he's uh, he's doing the bris first of the Shabbos one, and then he's doing <clears throat> then he's doing the other one, then he's doing the Arab Shabbos one, and if that's the case, so once the Shabbos one was done already, then Reb Meir would hold that he's automatically chayav. So when we compare that over to the to the carbon, once the carbon seeper is brought and you're bringing another carbon, Reb Meir should also say chayim. So we're going back and we're saying that how could we say Reb Ami's teret? Was that over there the carbon seeper was brought already, but over here you still have, um, if that's the pshat, so then when Reb Meir comes along and says that no, I hold that it's even, you're even exempt when you bring an extra carbon seeper, an extra carbon for the sake of a carbon seabird. It's not, the, it's not, it's not true. Reb Meir doesn't hold it. So the Gemara responds to this. It says, the Tizbara, do you really think this is the Pshat? There's an inherent problem here with this Brisa. Ma hasam of mitzvah pater, pater Rabbi Yeshua, echad the kavad mitzvah mechayev. The way that Reb Chia just taught this, or Reb Chia of Eval Arav just taught this, it doesn't make sense. In the case where, where there was no mitzvah, Rabbi Shua says you're potter, because you did a bris, of, a Sunday bris on Shabbos, there's no mitzvah there. And Rabbi Shua still says potter. And then, um, and then uh, the, uh, where there was a mitzvah, because you did a Friday bris on Shabbos, he says chayev. That doesn't make sense. Where he performed the mitzvah, that's his svarah to say that he's potter. Amri Debe Rabbi Yanai, so Rabbi Yanai answered this, the yeshiva Rabbi Yanai, the Reisha was really talking about that the Erev Shabbos, that the Shabbos one was done before Shabbos. So there was no, in other words, two babies, one was Friday, one was Shabbos. And then they switched. They did the Shabbos one on Erev Shabbos, on Friday. And the Friday one they did on Shabbos. So because there was no bris in front of you that was meant to be done on Shabbos, so that's why he's chayim. Shalein it in the Shabbos litches. Shabbos was not even meant to be pushed off because there was no bris here to be performed. The one that was supposed to be done today was already done yesterday. The Seifa, Nitna Shabbos Litzchis Etzli. By the other one, Shabbos, there was a bris that was supposed to be done on Shabbos, so there was a bris that was supposed to be done on Sunday. Now, Sunday didn't come yet. So even though you did the wrong one now, but the right one was standing here in front of me and was ready to be, uh, Shabbos was Nitna Litzchis. I was meant to be postponing, not postponing, pushing off Shabbos because of, because of the bris that I was supposed to do. I did the wrong one, but that's why Rabbi Shua says he's exempt. Even though there was no mitzvah, 
but Shabbos was allowed to be uh, pushed up. Hacha, when it comes to us, of course there was a carbon tziba here that was supposed to be brought, and it was. So there's no problem. But maybe would say that it was that it's exempt, even if it was done already. It doesn't matter. But Shabbos was meant to be pushed off, and you brought another one. That's why Reb Meir holds that it's acceptable. Not acceptable that it's he's not high of a if he brings a, an extra carbon, claiming that it's a carbon tziba. Amalei Rav Ashi Rav Kana. Rav Ashi says to Rav Kana, Achanami Rei Nit Neshav Litche Seitz Al Tinaikas Dalma. One second, what are you talking about? There's got to be a baby somewhere else in the world that it was. Um, that was born, that the bris was supposed to be today. Yeah, true. But for this person, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't acceptable. Okay. Now we say, any other, um, any other sacrifices that were shechted for a carbon Pesach, then it makes a difference. If imruyim, im einam ruyim, if they're not eligible to be a carbon pesach anyway because it's the wrong carbon, then he's clearly chayim. He brought them on Shabbos, so he violated Shabbos. Im ruyim, but if they were eligible to be a carbon pesach, so this is a uh, just a small mistake. Rabbi Lezer mechayiv chatas Rabbi Shua Peiter. Rabbi Shua says he's exempt. Man tana deshanale bein ruyim l'shen ruyim. Who's the one that makes this distinction? Between the big mistake and the small mistake, um, if it was an eligible, if it was eligible to be a carbon pesach because it was the right size, the right age, the right animal, and all of that, who makes that distinction? Reb Shimini, that's the opinion of Reb Shimon. Now, Reb Shimon is after Reb Lezer and Reb Yeshua, um, but he's the one. But we're saying that this opinion precedes him, and he's just the one that quotes it. So, the Tanya. Whether the sacrifice was possible to be that carbon or not. Or someone that shechs for a carbon tzibar is exempt. That's the opinion of Reb Meir. That's Reb Meir's opinion. We learned that before. Reb Elezer and Reb Yeshua never argued about if it's not eligible. Shachayev, everyone holds his chayev. It's only if it was a small mistake because this this could have actually been a carbon pesach. Amrav Bibi, or baby, Amrav Elazar, Rav Bibi says in the name of Rav Elazar, Peter Hayer Rav Meir Afilu Egel Shal Zibchi Shlamim Shashach Tulashim Pesach. Rav Meir's opinion is that even if it was a, a an egel as a calf. From the cattle family, not for, uh, from uh, from Bakar, which is not eligible to be a carbon Pesach. But, and it was supposed to be a carbon Shlaman, but he came along and he brings it as a carbon Pesach, he's going to be Pata. That's what Reb Meir's opinion is. One second. Reb Meir says that a Balmum. Is higher, according to Rabbi Yechonon. Rabbi Yechonon says that that Rabbi Meir says if, uh, if you if you shech the balmum, you're high. This has got to be like a balmum. You're shechting a a, a, a calf. Amalei be balimum and leitarid behu vahai tarid be. No, balimum he has no concern to offer it as a carbon. It's not an eligible carbon. But here he has a real carbon shlamim, and he wants to get things done. And so he's bringing his carbon shlamim and he shechted it wrong. He, he did it as a carbon Pesach because today was a carbon Pesach day. But by a balmum, he's going to be chayv because that he's, he shouldn't have done. He, would, he had no, tar, what, how do you say, tarid? Um, um, what worriness? It's not, what is it? He's not, concern, he's not over concerned about it. Or disturbed by it. He's not disturbed by it because it, it's not an eligible sacrifice anyway. So he didn't have to he have to get overworked about this, that, oh, when am I going to bring it? I'm here only for a day. I have to bring it all my carbonus in. No, it's a balmum. You don't need to bring this. You're not allowed to bring it. Very good question. Rava asks Rav Nachman, 
According to what we just said, if it's a Balmun, he has, he has not, he's not tarred, he's not worried about, about bringing his carbon. So therefore he's chayev, Reb Meir's maida that he's chayev. So what about if it's not even a sacrifice at all? It's just chulen. And he brings it in and he says that it's a Pesach. Now, I guess he was supposed to consecrate, consecrate, consecrate it before. He's supposed to sanctify it beforehand and he doesn't. He just brings it in and the shaykh just shechs it as a carbon Pesach. Amar Rav Meir, Mali Amar Rav Meir, Amalei Paiter Shem Pesach. Rav Meir would say he's Pater. This is a problem. Bam Rav Yechen, Maida Haya Rav Meir Bali Mumen. One second. By Bali Mumen, Rav Meir said that he's Chayev because over there he wasn't Tarit. By Chulin, he's for sure not Tarit. He doesn't have to shecht it uh, today. He shecht it whenever you want. Bali Mumen, Lay Michlafi, Hani Michlafi. Oh, Bal Mum, you see, it's missing a leg. There's um he noticed he's obviously noticing that it's a that it's not a carbon. But this he got confused and he thought maybe it was supposed to be a carbon. The time of the Rab Meir Misha Machlufi Balaya Khlufi. That's what Rab Meir's boy, that's that's the reason for Rab Meir is the confusion. That's not the reason for Rab Meir. Bam Rabibi Am Rablaza Pai Rab Meir Fila Ekal Shal Sipri Shlam Shachl Shem Pesach, Alma Time Dur Me Mishum Tarid. Rameyer's reason was because he was worried. And that's why he was exempt if it was a shlamim. It's not a confusion at uh, uh, Heter. Amalei tarid afogav delei michlaf. Michlaf afogav delei tarid. He's both. Rameyer has two, two reasons to exempt him from, uh, from, from bringing a carbon chatas if he did this on Shabbos. One reason is because he was worried about getting the sacrifice in. The other reason is because maybe he confused it with a carbon that was that something that was he was actually supposed to bring. Lafuki Balimumun Bulaya Khlufi Mechla, a Balmum does not get confused. And also Bulay Mitra Tarit. And it's also he's not worried about bringing it because it's a uh, Balmum, he doesn't have to bring it today. Yasuf Rab Zerev Rab Shmol Bar Yitzchak Akila, the Rab Shmol Bar Rab Yitzchak. Reb Zeira and Reb Shmuel Bar Reb Yitzchak are sitting at the entrance to Reb Shmuel Bar Reb Yitzchak's house, I guess. The Yasef Kamri, and they're saying the following. Am Reb Shimon ben Lakish. They say in the name of Rish Lakish, Reb Shimon ben Lakish. Nischalaf leishpud shal neiser b'shvud shal tzi v'achol chayev. There's a spit um, that has on it a, uh, a spit, is that the word? What's a better word? Is it for, uh... <laughs> a skewer, a skewer. That has on it um, nicer leftover ca- carbon meat, and he thinks that it's regular roasted meat, and he eats it. But really, this is a, a big violation. Nicer is a big violation, so he's chayev. But he got he got confused. <coughs> he got confused. He's chayev. That's what Rish Lakish says. But Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Rabbi Yechanan says, "Ish they need a ball chayev." If someone has relations with his wife, that's a nida. He's chayev. What's he chayev? I guess karas. Um, the same thing like before. Uh, b'shoigig uh, should be a chatas. B'shoigig should be a chatas. Just like before. Uh, just like by nicer. Nicer is karas. If he eats it. And b'shoigig should be a chatas, I assume. Yivante nida ball. Let's say it wasn't his wife that he had relations with. It was his sister-in-law. Um... It was the brother passed away, and it was his sister-in-law. He's Pater. <laughs> Why should be Pater? She's a Nida. She's a Nida. I mean, he's allowed to marry her, but she's a Nida. Why is he Pater? So I know why, Rabbi Shua, because he did a mitzvah. He uh, he married his Yivama. That's a mitzvah. Now, Rabbi Shua says, Taya Bidvar Mitzvah is, uh, is exempt from the if the mitzvah was performed. Right. Well, uh, Yavama is, there is a rabbinic mamar, a rabbinic kedushin, but it's really the relations that, that are to the... Uh... Yeah, but by Yavama, it's with B, I think. I think so. Okay. Some say that go back to the nicer case. Rabbi Yechen, what would Rabbi Yechenon say about the nicer? For sure, there's no mitzvah to eat tzli, to eat meat. So he's for sure chayim. If his wife was in need, uh, 
and he lives with Teres Chayev, for sure by the Nicer there was no mitzvah. Yistami by he potter. Some say that no. What would Rabbi Yechonin say in Rish Lakish's case? Rabbi Yechonin would say potter. My time. Hasim would have a little shiule. Why over here is he Chayev if he lives with his wife and she's in Eden? Should have asked her. Avil hachad lay avil shiule. Who do you who do you ask by a, a skewer? <laughs> yeah. What are you, sir? Um, <laughs> you nicer? Are you regular? Yeah, there's no way of, uh, of finding that out. So that's why Rabbi Yechonin would say he's exempt. Rabbi Yechonin, Maishna Yevamta, the covered mitzvah, the Nami covered mitzvah. Why does Rabbi Yechonin say he's exempt by the Yevama, not by the wife? Over there, there was a mitzvah, married the, but his wife is also a mitzvah, mitzvah Pruh Ravu. This is Bishtimi She was pregnant already. There's no mitzvah to have relations, and it's, uh, she's no mitzvah Pruh Ravu. So it's Vayikha Simchasaina. But to uh, to make to gladden his wife, that's also a mitzvah. It says shleib b'shasei nasa. It wasn't at the time. You see, every person has a certain um, uh, amount of time, amount uh, uh, frequency when he's supposed to be with his wife. Depends on his job. If he doesn't have a job, then it's every day. If he's a sailor, then it's uh, every six months. If he's uh, this type of driver, or that type of driver, taxi, whatever, different things. So there's twice a week or every other week or whatever it is, it depends. So we're here we're saying that he already fulfilled the Aina. This is an extra. So that it wasn't a mitzvah. But Rava says that if he sees his wife is desiring, um, so then he's supposed to, it's a mitzvah to be with her. This is Samach Levesta. It was when she was expecting to get her, to get her period. Some is a, a, ves, a vesis. It was it was Samach Levesta, and over there you don't have to be Misameya. Okay. Okay, so take bring that over to the Yavama. So there's different ways of learning this question right here. One way of learning it is that so at that point, if that's the case, that's the same point of the Yavama, that it was Samach Levesta, then at that point he doesn't have a mitzvah to marry her right then. She has to wait. It's not considered a, the mitzvah wasn't on him at that point. Other way of learning it is if Rabbi Yochanan says, this is a good question. If Rabbi Yochanan says that the reason why he's chayiv is because he was supposed to ask his wife, but by the skewer, there's no one to ask. That's why Rabbi Yochanan would say pater. So why is he pater by the Yavama? He should have asked the Yavama. She's also a human being, could ask her and get a response. So it says, no, Yevamte buzzes mine, Ishtila buzzes mine. His wife, he feels comfortable to ask her such a question. But the Yevama, he doesn't feel comfortable asking such a question. He's ready to have relations, but he can't ask her if she's <laughs> interesting. Rabbi Yechanan, okay, let's leave it over here. Rabbi Yechanan, come on. How can you just feel that thing out?